Hi everyone, my name is Stephen Poitras, Solutions Architect here at Nutanix, and today we're going to be talking about Nutanix deduplication. What we have here on the whiteboard is first our NDFS or Nutanix IO path. Uh, obviously we can see here our traditional components like our oplog, our extent store, and content cache. Essentially the same IO path is leveraged for Nutanix deduplication. So essentially upon a right IO, for larger IOs, we'll actually do what we call the fingerprint. And essentially that fingerprint is taking a SHA-1 hash of a certain granularity of data and storing that in the metadata. Essentially what that allows us to do is uniquely identify certain chunks or pieces of data. Uh, from there we can actually identify duplicate fingerprints and perform deduplication. So we offer two forms of deduplication. One is your traditional capacity tier dedupe. And this happens within the extent store. One of the key things to highlight here is all nodes participate in the deduplication framework. And rather than having to reread any of the data, essentially all we have to do is scan the metadata, look for duplicate fingerprints, and then discard the data associated with those duplicate fingerprints. The other piece is what we call our cache side dedupe, which happens in our content cache. This is an inline deduplicated read cache. And we'll actually take a deeper look of what the content cache looks like over here. So the content cache actually spans both memory and SSD and is broken down into a multi-pool structure. The first piece is what we call our single touch pool, which is a very small portion of the content cache which is solely in memory. Upon any read request, essentially that data would then be put into our single touch pool. If the data is never read again, essentially it'll follow an LRU cycle. And if it's never read, essentially it will become evicted. For data that is subsequently accessed, that'll actually go into what we call our multi-touch pool. The multi-touch pool spans both memory and SSD, and it's much larger than the single touch pool. From there, there are two LRU cycles, the first one in memory. Upon leaving that, it'll actually enter the LRU cycle of the SSD portion. And one of the key things to highlight here is on any additional request for that piece of data, essentially that data would then be placed at the top of the multi-touch pool again. What that allows us to do is actually keep the most frequently accessed data within the cache. So that'll allow us to have a much higher cache hit ratio and return more read requests from the cache versus having to go down to disk. So that covers how we handle Nutanix deduplication. Thanks for watching.